Okay, so I just want to make a quick video detailing uh, my matchup chart and why I put specific matchups where I did. Um, I made this matchup chart, I believe, yesterday. And I had a lot of people asking questions about it, and I figured it was easier to answer all these questions at once with just a quick uh, quick overview of what I think of each of these matchups. Uh, this is pretty, pretty preliminary. There's a lot of these matchups that I haven't played extensively. So there's a lot of these that are definitely going to change with time. Um, but yeah, let's let's get into it. I'm going to start from the bottom. Um, all these ones in the, the bottom are ones that I don't have enough info on. Haven't played the matchups um, even like at all. And I don't know enough about like even how the characters play to, to like realistically put them into a tier or feel comfortable putting them into a tier. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on each of the characters unless I'm pretty confident on where they are. Uh, just to make sure that this video doesn't go like mega long with how many characters there are. Uh, plant. This matchup's bad for plant. Your projectiles beat uh, plant's projectiles. And then like they're heavy so they get comboed. Um, the only thing you have to watch out for is just like making sure you're not trying to do any combos while they have um, like spike ball. Not too hard. Uh, DDD isn't bad. Uh, yet again, Power Wave is really, really good in this matchup. He kind of has to respect it because it'll send Gordo straight back at him. And then if he's doing like the air camping, you can just sit back and wait. Uh, you kind of have to play lame, but it uh, isn't bad for Terry at all. Uh, Little Mac, we're, we're, we're literally just better Little Mac, so this, this matchup's fine. Uh, Falcon, he really has to scrap with us. And us having the projectile and like kind of better hitboxes than him really kind of bodies him also like down tilt down smash near the ledge sends him at such an awkward angle that he should just like almost never get back uh ken uh ken's bad you know that's all there is to that one uh ganondorf yet again kind of has to scrap with uh with terry you can kind of zone him out by using power waves uh, and then catching approaches with like nares and that sort of thing we have good poke range with F-Tilts and down smashes that can kind of like contest with his neutral options. It's just kind of like being aware of when he might uh, dash attack or down, or, uh, down special. Uh, Donkey Kong, yet again, it's it's Donkey Kong. Power Wave is really good at keeping him out. Um, if he can get you off stage, it's rough, but like as long as you have good mash and you don't play around the edges too much, you shouldn't be able to get cargo thrown off stage that hard. Uh, and then Doc as well kind of has to scrap with. I might actually move this one into slight advantage. I think Doc is pretty good. But uh, he just he doesn't have the like tools to edge guard Terry or to like go off stage. He has like down B, but usually um, his like areas he can cover are so limited that Terry can get around them. So that's advantage state. Uh, the matchups that I feel like Terry has advantage on. Uh, slight advantage. Wolf. Wolf, uh, Wolf and Terry feel very similar to me. Uh, they both have their like zoning neutral B projectile. Um, so this matchup like feels fine. They both have like similar recoveries that like can be kind of gimped. But I think Terry does better in like the scramble and the kind of like scrappy moments, which is why I, I give him the edge here. Uh, we fit. I actually don't know that much about, but I think that like power wave and just playing patient against we fit um will make this matchup okay terry doesn't have that many good options that hit ledge so if we fit like just commits to camping ledge this might be even or slight disadvantage but i have it here for now uh dark samus and samus both in slight advantage uh power wave is actually like really good at stuffing out their neutral and dash attack and um dash attack and What's it called? Crack shoot are actually both really good at like just getting in that burst range and shutting down their projectiles. So I have this in slight advantage. Uh, Villager slight advantage as well. I, I really like Terry against zoners, and this this might not even be uh, Terry specific. This might just be me. I really like playing against zoners, and I always have. So this might be a little bit of bias on my part, but I've never had that much trouble against Villager. 
um, can kind of like zone them out with your poking tools, F tilt, down smash, and then you have the good like burst options to get in when they're camping projectiles. Uh, Ridley, I have in slight advantage, but thinking about it more, I think it's probably actually even. He uh, he can really swat you out of the air with nares, uh, forward airs, like that sort of thing. If you're ever trying to jump in, and then. If he commits to playing off stage on a, like a good stage where he can plank, there shouldn't be much that Terry can do about that. Uh, Palu, I have it in slight advantage. This one's maybe a little bit bold, but I I really think that like in those kind of like scrappy moments, Terry can really shine in this matchup. I don't think it's that bad. It probably should be an even-ish, but I I believe in in Terry to win that. Uh, slight advantage over me, Brawler. I think Me Brawler is pretty damn good, but um, yet again, he kind of has to scrap, and Terry has the advantage in neutral there with the power wave and the the, uh, the better poking tools. Mewtwo kind of falls in the same category as Samus and Dark Samus. Decent projectile game, good keep away game, um, but Terry has like a decent projectile to kind of contest that, as well as the good burst options to kind of just get into, the, into Mewtwo's face. Uh, Ryu... Ryu actually gives uh, Terry a bit of trouble just because he like his uh, his red fireball is just really good in this matchup and can kind of keep Terry out if he commits to zoning. But usually he can't like really commit to zoning that hard. Uh, it's a bit awkward not being able to use your good like cross up tools like dash attack and crack shoot and burn knuckle to like try and mix up your opponent. So this is a bit of an awkward matchup, but I think it's still Terry favor. Uh, K. Rule, this is one of the heavies that does a little bit better against Terry. Crown and uh, and Cannonball are a little bit hard to get in on, but if you're playing properly, you shouldn't be trying to get in on K. Rule. You should just be using power waves and kind of keeping them out. And then Incineroar is kind of the same thing. You have to be really careful about when you use power wave in this matchup because he can just revenge it. But in general, if you're using these power, the slow power waves and he revenges it, you can usually get a punish off of him revenging. Uh, and if you get a punish with a grab, then, you know, revenge is just gone. Uh, Bayo, this matchup's a little bit scary because of how good her edge guarding is, but usually in neutral, like, her frame data just isn't good enough to, like, contest with Terry's jabs and pokes and that sort of thing. Hero, yet again, is another one kind of like Samus and Mewtwo, where they have these good projectile tools, but with the with Terry's good burst options, he can usually deal with it. Uh, Falco, this one I have in slight advantage. It's a little bit scary jumping in because of up tilts and that sort of thing. But yet again, if you're using your poking tools properly and using dash attack in these burst options, you can usually kind of like find a find a pattern in Falco's habits and kind of push through. So Ness, this one was some uh, one that some people gave me a little bit of trouble on. But I really believe that this is slight advantage for Terry. As long as you're using like your big aerials, like forward air, as well as like F tilts and down smashes, it's really hard for Ness to get in. You have to definitely whiff punish things like his forward air and his snare, rather than trying to like punish them on shield because his air mobility is so good. But this matchup isn't that bad. Uh, Banjo, this one I haven't played too much but it feels yet again similar to the like projectile kind of zoners yet again it could be a matter of me just liking playing against zoners but i believe that this one is is pretty good uh corin yet again this isn't this isn't what i'm super confident on this one could be an evenish depending on the corin but having the good poke tools that that terry has he can kind of like contest with swords as well as like the burst options, you can actually whiff punish some of Corrin's aerials and that sort of thing. So I think this one isn't that bad. All right, so moving on to the evenish matchups. Uh, Young Link, this is one of the projectile characters that has good enough projectiles that will actually like have some success at keeping Terry out. So I have that one in even. If Terry can get in, he's usually okay, but it's not all as or it's not always as simple as just like yeah, get in with how good Young Link's projectiles are. And then Wario. This one's scary because he can use Waft to really shut down your, like, go moves. If he gets in and gets a good, like, 
even half waft at like 70 or 80. I feel like you should try and get two half wafts per per match against Terry and just kind of deny him his uh his power geyser and his Buster Wolf. And he's if he's able to do that, this matchup becomes kind of tough for Terry. Uh, I have Zelda and Evenish just because her projectiles are really hard to deal with for Terry. Phantom's really really good, and she kind of like Phantom kind of destroys him off stage as well. Toon Link is very similar to Young Link, just in that like his projectiles are actually pretty hard to get around. That's that's the the gist of it. Yoshi having really really good air speed and the uh, the double jump is actually a big deal. Uh, having the armor on double jump means he's actually able to get out of some of Terry's combos that other characters wouldn't be able to get out of, which makes this kind of an awkward matchup. And then Yoshi can play really well off stage as well as kind of like zoning. So I have this one at even. Krom and Roy, I have them both at even-ish. They're sword characters, which makes it a little bit tough for Roy, or sorry, for, uh, for Terry. But Terry's burst options make this matchup okay. He can get in with dash attacks, crack shoots, that sort of thing. And he whiff punished them pretty well. So I have that one at even. Rosa, I'm not super confident on this one. I haven't played against many like really good Rosas in this game. And especially not with Terry yet. But Terry's dash attack is really good at getting rid of Luma. And as well as Burn Knuckle is really good at getting rid of Luma. But once he's off stage, Rosa can really, really kind of body Terry off stage. So I have this one at even for how, you know, how Terry can take away Rosa's Luma but can also get hurt off stage. Then Robin is one of the characters that is, is while a projectile zoner, has some really, really oppressive like sword hitboxes as well. So I have this one at even. If Terry plays smart and slow and uses power waves to condition certain options, then covers, and then uses burst options when the opponent isn't predicting it, I think this one's okay. It's just a little bit, uh, a little bit tough to find openings sometimes. Rob, I have at even-ish. This one could actually be moved up to slight disadvantage. I'm uh, not super sure I haven't played against too many Robs yet, but Rob off stage is terrifying for, for Terry. If he gets side beat, he should usually just die. And then sometimes finding a way in is hard. But Terry has some really, really good options for punishing Nair on the way down. His up tilt is intangible at the top, which makes it pretty easy to punish the, the Nair with just an up tilt. Um, or just his parry punishes are really, really strong. So that's another option he has. Uh, Pokemon Trainer, I have it even. It's just, uh, like, all of the Pokemon kind of have to scrap with Terry besides Ivysaur. And Terry's actually really get good at getting in against Ivysaur. He's got Crack Shoot, which goes, like, right over Razor Leaf if you time it right. And if you're playing against the other Pokemon that have to scrap a little bit more, it doesn't feel bad at all. So I have this one at even just because Pokemon Trainer has a lot of really, really good tools, but they kind of have to scrap. Uh, Peach and Daisy I have here as well. I think Terry has a lot of good moves that stuff out float. Like fair, even just like fair and neutral, like really stuffs out that float height that Peach and Daisy want to be at, as well as Crack Shoot. It reaches pretty high above him and kind of like abusing that to stop uh, to stop Peach and Daisy from floating where they want to be is really effective. And then Pit and Dark Pit, they're just pretty strong and neutral, which is why I, uh, I put this at even-ish. As well as like their arrows kind of give Terry some troubles offstage and they can go pretty far offstage themselves. So I have them at even just because the neutral game is actually really hard against them compared to some of the other characters. Uh, sword Fighter. This one comes down to mostly Sword Fighter's advantage state. Sword Fighter has some pretty reliable kill options that will kill Terry below 100, like down throw up B or tornado at ledge when he's trying to recover. Makes it really awkward for him to recover. So the fact that they can get rid of stocks before 100 pretty reliably is scary, and then also it's very hard to recover against them. So Lucina and Marth, I have in it evenish, and it's just because they're probably the most well-rounded sword characters that make it uh, make it pretty tough for Terry to find a way in if they're playing the game correctly. And then also having counter on some of Terry's recovery options actually makes it pretty tough for uh, 
for him to like get back to stage safely. And then after that, we've got Lucas. I have this at evenish. Uh, his Zare is kind of annoying to deal with, and he has some pretty good like aerial poke options, like forward air. Uh, for he's got forward tilt as well to kind of like stuff you out. His poke options really kind of like rival Terry's. And then if you're off stage, his down smash just kind of like destroys you at ledge. So I have this one at even. I think if you play a good poke game, you can kind of keep him out and force him to play kind of respectfully. But if he gets you off stage, you're in you're in for a, a, a tough time. I have Isabel here as well, which is a little bit different than Villager being in slight advantage. But I think Fishing Rod is really annoying in this matchup because I don't really like shielding his Terry. I like being in the air. I like moving around a lot. And having that Fishing Rod to kind of like screw with that, as well as to uh, screw with your recovery. I feel like it's really, really effective at dealing with your recovery compared to some of Villager's options. Uh, then we have Inkling. I think this is a, is a, it's a, it's a punishing matchup if you don't know, if you don't play patiently. Because Inkling's jab can definitely like rival Terry's jab in the sense that like if you're both going for jabs a lot of the times you'll get hit by inkling jabs and you don't want to get hit by inkling jabs at all but if you play slow use power waves that sort of thing it's not uh not that bad you just have to make sure to commit to playing slow and knowing the ranges where you're gonna get up thrown up aired and play anti-gravit around those percents Greninja looking at this I think I might actually have him in slight disadvantage instead he kind of bodies Terry off stage, and then his burst options are so fast that it's it's hard to tell when he's going to come in, which makes things hard for Terry. He does kind of have to scrap, which makes me want to put him in even, because I think Terry will generally have the advantage in like those scramble situations. But I, I think he'd probably be in slight disadvantage. He can also throw off Terry's recovery with water. Fox, I have an even. He really has to scrap with Terry, but he's good at scrapping. Like, he can actually, like, contest Terry on a lot of the things that he does on stage. So, while he doesn't have the greatest edge guarding tools, he can actually kind of, like, contest Terry on stage with just his speed and his whiff punishing and the things that he can do there. Duck Hunt, I have an even ish, just because of. It's, it's similar to yet again Young Link or Toon Link. Projectile character but your burst options don't work quite as well. Can's hard to deal with. Um, and then also just like getting through Gunman and Clay Pigeon is just tough. And then also like off stage dealing with Can and just like some of Duck Hunt's better aerials. It's kind of hard to get back on stage. I have Cloud at even, which is mostly just because his, his sword is so big and then he's also so fast and he can kind of contest Terry on stage. He has good pokes like F tilt to kind of contest uh, Terry's moves on stage. And then yet again, he can semi reliably kill Terry before 100, which is, which is scary. Cause you want to be able to use those other, other moves against him. And then Diddy, I have it even ish just because of how good he is in neutral and banana drop into down, down air is really good as well so it, it's scary he if he plays well with banana he can sometimes even deny you your go meter just by doing the infinite into like a smash attack or like just a good like banana f smash at like 95 it's a little bit tougher for diddy to do but it's something that he can definitely get away with i have bowser jr at even ish his combo game is really, really good. He can get Terry to like 50 or 60 off of like one neutral opening pretty consistently. And then after that, he kills pretty early as well in the like 90 to 100 range if he has his setups right, which is kind of spooky for Terry. If he plays evasively, it's hard for Terry to kind of catch him with uh, with cart. And then some of the projectiles are actually kind of tough for Terry to deal with offstage. So that, that kind of rounds out the evenish. And then 
I, I say even-ish because, you know, some of these, I think, are subject to change depending on uh, how things go in the next little bit of ultimate. So then, slight disadvantage. Start with ZSS. Uh, ZSS is just so fast. Like, she can really contest with Terry. It's hard for you to get, like, parry punishes on things like Nair. Um, or, like, Rising Forward Air is also really good at calling out his jumps. So she can really just kind of, like screw with you in advantage state like it's hard to contest her on stage and then she can go very deep off stage as well so while she doesn't have that many kill confirms that kill before 100 she can really deny you that go meter just by like edge guarding you really well uh belmont these the, these are like the only zoners i think that like really um like just beat Terry on the like on the sole thing that they're like really good at zoning <laughs> like it's very hard to get back on stage against them it's very hard to get in against their whips um, and then their projectiles are just a plus on top of all of that Sheik this is a this is an interesting matchup you don't see much of her anymore but she's actually so good at killing Terry off stage just all of her tools for for kind of like keeping Terry off stage and slowly resetting those those uh, situations off stage are really, really good. And it's also hard for Terry to find openings against Sheik if she's playing things right. Uh, Meta Knight, very similar to Sheik, except his thing is more of like an advantage state sort of thing. This neutral isn't quite as good as Sheik's is on stage, but he punishes you even harder off stage if his combos are in the right spot, which is, is terrifying. <laughs> Some of his uh, aerials and stuff off stage are, are extremely good. Mega Man, this is just very, very good neutral. Very hard to get in. Pellets are hard to deal with. Back air is really hard to deal with. And then if he can't edge guard you, I mean, his down air is actually really good for edge guarding, uh, edge guarding Terry as well as his back air. But even if he can't edge guard you, it's so hard to find like a, a power geyser or a buster wolf on him just because he's never trying to find his way in on you. And that's when Power Geyser is really strong. It's when your opponent's like trying to get out of the corner or like jumping around a lot. So it's actually really tough to find Mega Man with those moves regardless. And he's heavier. <laughs> um, your like dash attack and crack shoot aren't that effective against things like um, like pellets and that sort of thing. So it's, it's really tough actually. I think this matchup is pretty hard. Um... After that, we've got Mario at slight disadvantage. I have this just because his frame data on stage is really, really good. He's really good at the scrappy kind of stuff, and his combos are better than Terry's. So if Terry loses one of those kind of like scrappy interactions on stage, Mario's going to get a lot more than Terry would. And then also off stage, water actually like is, is hard to deal with as Terry, as well as Kate, if the Mario knows what they're doing. As well as just like things like back air chains off stage. It's pretty tough for Terry. Link, this one is... This one comes down to usually like offstage play. This one actually could be an even-ish, I think. But Link's Nair is pretty tough for Terry to deal with in the air. And then the projectiles are kind of hard to get through. But it's really Bomb that makes this matchup so hard. Uh, Link down throwing Bomb at ledge so it bounces. Makes it hard for, for Terry to get back up onto stage if he's already at ledge. And if he's off stage, the massive bomb explosion hitbox that Link can control can really screw up Terry's recovery. So I have that one at slight disadvantage. Could be evenish. Uh, Kirby, I actually have at slight disadvantage, just because of how um, how tough neutral is against Kirby because of Kirby's crouch. And this is really like weird to think about, but like like something like 75% of Terry's moves, just like Kirby can crouch. Like, if I'm just thinking about it offhand, it's like forward tilt, up tilt, jabs, uh, burn knuckle, crack shoot. Um, I think it, it crouches the hitbox of power dunk. It crouches F smash, up smash. Um, all of these tools that you want to be using in neutral, Kirby can just crouch under them and then either like up tilt you after or down tilt you after. And both of them are like really good combo starters for Kirby. And then with how many jumps Kirby has can actually kind of like screw you up off stage. So it, you have to play this matchup a lot different than any other, which makes it very, very awkward. Uh, Ike, I have at slight disadvantage. 
And this one is mostly for how tough it is to get back on stage against Ike. Against other sword characters, sometimes they can swat you a couple of times off stage and you'll live. But Ike, it's like if he guesses once, usually his, uh, his aerials are strong enough to just put you right off stage. And then just die. Uh, Eruption is also really good at ledge to cover Terry's options, which makes this one's kind of tough. Um, and then Bowser, I have it sliced at disadvantage as well. And this is mostly because he can't, you can't jab against Bowser. And that's where a lot of your neutral comes from. But the fact that you can't do jab, jab, power dunk or any of your like jab confirms because of tough guy really hurts Terry in this matchup. And then Bowser's also really good at dealing with the jump-ins that Terry likes to do with Nair and forward air by just using uh, Whirling Fortress or Upbeat. So this matchup I actually had some trouble with. Um, and Bowser's actually decent with forward air and back air, like trying to prevent people from getting back to stage. He's got some good tools in this matchup. All right, so we've just got the disadvantage left. And I think this is the... These are the, like, the characters that definitely destroy Terry the hardest, in my opinion. So, we're starting this off with Sonic. Uh, this one might be strange for people to see in like a hard disadvantage, just because he's not really like a, a top tier or anything, but it's so hard to deal with Sonic's approaches as Terry. Having Sonic completely dictate the pace of neutral is really, really tough for Terry. Terry has to really chase Sonic around unless he's ahead and having to kind of like guess when Sonic's going to come in with spin dash is really hard and the mental advantage is always in Sonic's favor. Even if you're trying to react to spin dash and like dash attack it or like burn knuckle it or you know use these tools that like are actually pretty decent against spin dash they can just jump and then homing attack or like they have so many mix-ups out of Spin Dash that actually makes it really, really hard for Terry when, or Terry to predict when Sonic is gonna like actually approach. And that's what you have to do in this matchup is kind of predict when he's gonna be like right up in your face. So that's one that I think is actually pretty tough. Uh, Snake is really hard, uh, and it's just because his projectiles are so good. It's so easy for him to keep Terry out. And then if you're ever off stage, it's like, okay, if I go high, I'm getting Nikita and I'm dying. And if I go low, he can just like start charging F smash at ledge. And like, it beats pretty much all of your low options. It'll two frame uh, Terry, even though it's not really a two frame, it's just him not snapping. But that F smash will kill Terry at like 50. So you never want to go low. But then if you're going high, you always have to deal with Nikita or up smash. And like, he just, it feels like he dies like, 90% of the time he gets off stage and if you ever approach snake when he's at like near the ledge him being able to do back throw and put you in like like even back throw with dash attack when he's further away from the ledge puts you in a really bad spot off stage where a lot of the times you just die uh shulk definitely like the strongest sword character against terry big disjoints keep him out and then like shield mode can kind of get him out of some of the bnbs that uh that terry has so he can live for a really long time too and then smash art can really just deny terry the use of his go moves as well which makes this matchup pretty hellish uh pika i have in disadvantage as well which is mostly just because of how hard pika destroys terry off stage and how easy it is for pika to get terry off stage uh, using back air just in neutral and just chaining back airs together in order to get Terry off stage. He, he, you have to be so careful about how you play this off stage against Pika. And a good Pika will, I feel like, take your stock off stage more times than not. Joker. Joker's just damn good. It's really hard for Terry to kind of like get in against Joker. It's hard for him to deal with guns. Guns kind of destroy him off stage and it's easy for Joker to gimp him. As well as, like, if you're using Power Wave irresponsibly, he can get Arsene off of it. And then, with Arsene, it's pretty tough for for Terry to actually get to those, like, 100% ranges without being, like, fear of dying. And Tetrakarn is also just super good at, at stuffing Terry's recoveries and making sure he can't get back up on stage. So that one I have a disadvantage as well. And then, Puff. 
I have in disadvantage as well, which is because a lot of characters when they fall out of moves like Power Dunk or like can like get out of Terry's B and Bs, they don't actually they aren't actually able to do that much to punish Terry. But because Puff is so floaty, she can actually just like float out of those moves and then punish with like falling up air rest or like back air to put him off stage. Puff really destroys him off stage, and then if they know their rest setups, this is like really hard to ever get go meter in. Because you're either dying off stage before 100, or you're dying on stage before 100 to rest. So, especially with the buffs too, this matchup got, got really hard. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else for that matchup. Pound's pretty tough to deal with, because all of your like pokes are pretty physical. And you have to be really precise and either parry the like lingering hitbox of pound or just like crouch under pound and like up smash. But it's tough. If you can manage to get your go mode and get to 100%, uh, Power Geyser is really good at stuffing puff out, but it's really hard to get to that point. And I feel like against good puffs, you shouldn't get to that point. Um, so that's pretty much it. That's, that's all the characters. None of this is in order. I just have these like categories. So Puff isn't necessarily his worst, but it's it's in this category. I'm gonna hopefully get some info on these last ones in the next little while. I'll see what I can figure out there. And I'm sure a lot of this will be changing. So if you see something that doesn't look right, it's it's probably not. But this is what I have as kind of like my, my feelings going into, into Terry to begin with. And yeah, I think that's all I've got for this right now. Let me know what you guys think, if you disagree with any of these matchups or agree with any of these matchups. And feel free to share this around with people who are wondering how their, their character does against Terry. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon.